What's up everybody? This is Dustin, and today we're going to be covering Applied Energistics 2 channels, subnetworks, and peer-to-peer -peer networks. This is just a really, really small Applied Energistics network to kind of sh give you a brief overview of how everything's set up. If you already have a pretty decent idea of how channels work and how many channels and all that good stuff, you might want to go ahead and switch, skip to the next session, which I'll probably show on the screen here. Yeah, okay. So what is a channel? A channel is a data line that connects applied energistics to machines and devices. So each, each one of these devices takes up one channel. So you have this interface, which takes up a channel, this drive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all except for this energy cell. It seems like basically everything that has to do with items on an applied energistics network checks up one channel. There are a couple exceptions, but you'll figure those out along the way, I hope. Anyway, so each data cable can carry eight channels. So this Flux cable can carry eight channels, this Smart cable can, Covered cables will carry eight channels, Dense cables will carry 32, and I don't have any set up here, and I think we might cover them in a little bit. But on this small network, we already have five channels. And you can see that, that on this little Wayla tooltip, that's five of eight channels. By the way, I usually just use regular Flux cables in my networks with a couple of inline smart cables because I don't like to make smart cables. So just a few inline will give you a good idea of what kind of channels are in your network. See, I just have two set up and it already shows me I have five. So that's, that's good enough for me. So let's talk about a couple of the devices on the network. Let's talk about the ME interface. The ME interface lets you push items into and pull items out of uh, Applied Energistics 2 network. So if we take some iron and stick it into this chest right here, we can see it flowing through and you can see it showing up on our network. And you can also pull items out of it and it also has to do with auto crafting, which I don't want to get into in this video. Maybe another video I'll try to do auto crafting stuff. So that's basically what the ME interface does. So let's move on to the storage buses. Storage buses are easy enough. They allow your ME interface to directly attach to an inventory. So if I had a chest here and filled it up with goodies, we'd be able to see that in here. We can see iron in here. There's 48 iron in here and 48 in our network. If we take some of this out, it'll show up on our catch that someone was taken out. So that's really nice. So we can have deep storage units or caches or barrels or something so we don't have to clog up the network with lots and lots and lots of items. Now something really cool you can do with storage buses and interfaces is create a subnetwork, which I will show you over there right now. Now check out this little network right here. We have just a regular smart cable connecting all seven of these ME drives to this controller. And you can see everything in there. There's not really anything in that little network. But you can see it's taking up seven channels because there's seven drives. If we make a subnetwork on it, we can make it so this these seven drives output to one channel. And we can do that with an interface. If we plop an interface right here, and we put a storage bus right here, we can see the storage bus will read whatever is in this interface, which will read whatever is in the subnetwork. Now you can see this doesn't work because we don't have power to it. We can't just put a normal cable back here because it'll just put this entire stack into our main network and now we have eight channels because we added a couple things. So what we do instead is we put quartz fiber, which will carry power, but it will not carry data. So we put that right there. There's a separation between there. We can see that lighting up with eight channels on it because we have those seven drives and the one interface. Hook to our storage, our, <laughs> our storage bus, and we should be able to see that iron ore in this stack right here. Really, really neat. And as you can see, we're only taking up one channel because there's technically only one machine, this storage bus, on this network. 
Now, there is a more ca compact way to do this. This ME interface, you can actually craft it to be this one wide, this little tiny block. So we can put that right there, stick on a cable, and it should work the exact same way. And if you ever want the big blocky one back, you can just craft it back just like that. Now here we have two stacks of 7ME drives like we had right over there. And we are going to hook both of these up to our network. Now, I don't have any special things going on back here. And as you can see, it's taking up eight channels, which is that stack and one of these. The rest are dark because there's not enough channels to go around on the stack. Now, if we do the exact same thing we did over there, you'd think that we would need two channels to support both stacks. Well, not necessarily, because you can make two different subnetworks for your stack. So we put an interface on this one, put a storage bus on here, a glass cable, and provide... I think I messed up. I did. Sweet. So storage bus, interface, some cables back here. Let's replace one of those with smart cables. Let's put a quartz fiber one on here because we don't want to connect to the main network. And now we should see that this has eight channels going to it because it has it's a stack of seven. Now we just make another subnetwork, the exact same way we did before. We'll put we'll put an ME interface on one side, storage bus on the other, hook it directly into our machine, and you can see it has one channel attached to it. Now this shouldn't work because that doesn't have power yet, so we do the exact same thing we did over here. Just provide power. Just like that. Now as you can see, this won't work because Let's count how many machines we have. We have seven of these. We have one ME interface and that storage bus on this little sub network right here. So we just need to get rid of one of those and we have power to everything. And now we can access everything in the network, which is empty right now. But this is a really easy way to chain your networks together and only take up one channel. By the way, this chain, this sub network chain is infinitely expandable. It's called a Super Saurian drive after Saurian. Am I pronouncing that right? I don't know. But after the guy who invented it, which works the exact same over there as the one over there. So you have seven channels on this one, which goes to a storage bus interface. Power runs to it with a quartz fiber cable. So it just keeps repeating and we can read everything in the network. It's pretty cool and very, very useful if you want to have a big uh, network of caches with storage buses on it. Now, using our infinitely recursive storage system is great for storing items. Other than that, it really can't do anything like auto crafting or anything like that. It can just store really large amounts of items on one channel, which is very, very useful. But if we try to do any auto crafting right here, we can see we have our ME interface is hooked up to a kind of auto crafting system. This won't work, but like I said before, I might do an auto crafting video later. But we can see some recipes in here that are hooked into our ME interface. But this stack over here isn't really connected to our network. So how do we connect it? We could just run dense cables to everything, but after you get enough devices, that's not really viable anymore. So what you can do is you can use P2P tunnels. And I'm going to set up these tunnels right now. So now we have all of our P2P tunnels connected to the network, but we can see we're not getting our crafting recipes in our terminal. Why is that? Well, we still have to hook up our P2P tunnels to the controller. And we do that by taking the output tunnel, which is the one that connects to the controller, and shift right click it. And then we just go over to the inputs and right click, right click, and they should show up. But they don't, because we still need to put power into our tunnels, because they don't transfer power through each other. So we're just going to take quartz fiber, plop it down like that. 
now we should be able to see our all of our patterns, our crafting stuff. Now that's basically all there is to P2P tunnels. I will give you a quick tip is to put your input or your output tunnel on a dense cable connected to your ME controller. And we'll route this around like that. Shift right click it. Right click that. Right click that. So now we can see three channels on this sub network. And we can see all 16 channels on that. This makes it way easier to debug when you have problems. Because a lot of times I will fill up a P2P tunnel and not realize it and then wonder why the heck my network is not working. So this is just a really nice way to debug everything. Uh, I think I already said it, but if I didn't, P2P tunnels can carry up to 32 channels at a time, which is the same as each side of an ME controller, which is the same as a dense cable. So it works out nicely to have this little debugging tool right here. Okay, now that we have a pretty basic understanding, well, hopefully we have a basic understanding of how to set up both some networks and peer-to-peer -peer networks, let's actually set one up in real time. First off, I'm going to start with the, the sub-network. I'll put the sub-network on here. First off, I'm going to need to put storage buses on all of these so we can access all the storage from our network. Let's just hook some cable onto here. And we do the same thing we did before. We'll put an ME interface on this side, storage bus on this side, and then just run a cable right to our controller. And as we see, we have one of eight channels on here, one of eight channels, or one of 32 on there. And we should see all of our stuff in here. Well, why aren't we? Because we didn't hook up power. Don't ever forget to hook up power. It's kind of important. Whoops. Just get this. Break all that off. Okay. And now we have all our stuff in here. Pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. And of course we could always just, instead of putting out the cable to the side, we can just put the corpse fiber right there and then run a cable up like that. Just to take up less space. So very simple subnetwork already hooked to this. So now let's go ahead and run this one. This one will be really, really easy. So we will need our P2P tunnel. We're going to need another P2P tunnel because I only got one. P2P tunnel, ME. Okay, so we just stick that on there like that. Stick the other end right there. That's not right. So let's put it, not like that. Actually, that one's not right either. So that one goes like that, and then this one goes like this, except turn around. Like that, hopefully. And we stick them together. It's running two channels, so let's go ahead and link them. Our ME controller is right there, so let's shift click that one and just right click that one. And it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because we forgot to run power again. Of course. Uh. Let's run power this way, like that. And now it's running. And if we check the dense cable, it should have seven channels on it. Yep. So you have those six and that one right there. So that's the basics of how to set up peer-to-peer -peer networks and some networks. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I might make another one. Someday. One of these days.